so let us start with a new topic of durability of concrete now when we talk about durability of concrete and particularly reinforced cement concrete rcc we have to consider the durability aspect of the concrete part alone and then we have to consider the durability aspect of the steel as well so it comprises of these two concrete and steel under concrete we have durability for temperature and then chemical attacks under temperature changes we have fire action so how a concrete will behave under fire how it will behave under frost that is uh, under extremely low temperatures then in chemical attacks we have sulfate attack acid attack and sea water so how a concrete will behave under all these three conditions and in steel we have corrosion of steel so basically the durability aspect of steel boils down to the corrosion of it so all we need to do is to prevent the corrosion and how it happens is first of all is because of the carbonation second is because of the chloride induced corrosion so let us start with the concrete part first and under temperature changes we will start see what is about the fire action so fire action basically is that we are subjecting our concrete to extreme high temperatures or fire fire resistance of concrete structure is determined by three main factors first is the capacity of concrete to withstand heat without cracking and losing strength this is the first aspect so our concrete should be able to withstand high heat and it should not lose its strength second is the conductivity of the concrete to heat this point basically means that how fast heat can travel through the body of the concrete that is conduction of heat uh, through any body of the uh, any any material for example if i want to give you an example let, let, let us take steel and let us take plastic okay if you keep both of these uh, steel and plastic into the refrigerator and then take it out after let's say 2 hours or 3 hours try to keep steel on your on one of your hand and try to keep plastic on the other hand what you will feel is that the steel is very cold it feels very cold to your palm but the plastic does not feel that cold as compared to the steel why does this happen is steel does steel has uh, lesser temperature than plastic the answer is no if both the plastic as well as steel are going to have the same temperature because they were inside the fridge the differentiating parameter here is the conductivity steel is far better conductor of heat whereas plastic is not that good conductor of heat so what steel did to your palm was it immediately transferred its uh, temperature to your palm whereas plastic was not able to do that hence you felt more cold uh, while holding that steel so yeah that is basically the conduction parameter of the heat third is coefficient of thermal expansion so uh, under heat most of the objects expand and uh, the extent to which they are expanding that will depend on the coefficient of thermal expansion in the case of reinforced concrete the fire resistance is not only dependent upon the type of concrete but also on the thickness of cover to reinforcement the cover as we all know that the cover is very important part of the durability aspect because in case of a reinforced concrete the moment heat reaches to your steel steel has a different thermal or coefficient of thermal expansion as compared to concrete and it is going to expand much faster than the concrete itself so that is going to cause cracking in your concrete so more the cover to your steel better is the durability aspect overall due to fire there is high temperature gradient created that is when the fire happens you can see that inside of the concrete remains significantly cooler than the outer temperature and because of this gradient of temperature that is there is a very high temperature at the boundary of the concrete and relatively low temperature inside the body or inside the material therefore there is a gradient setup whenever we uh, hear this word gradient it means that there is some difference between two quantities so because of this gradient the outer surface starts spalling apart or it starts uh, cracking due to this exposed part starts spalling apart 
The reinforcement also expands in longitudinal as well as lateral manner due to which the bond between the reinforcement and concrete is lost. So when the heat finally reaches your reinforcement, it is going to expand laterally, correct? And because of this expansion, what will happen? The concrete here, concrete uh, adjacent to your steel, it will experience a lot of stress. And because of that, the cracking will start inside uh, from from within the concrete. So therefore, heat overall the, due, due to fire action, there will be a lot of cracking and a lot of micro cracks will be formed inside the body of the concrete. Apart from this, even if your concrete sustains that heat or even if the concrete has sustained the fire, even after that your concrete become weak. So how does that, uh, how does the concrete becomes weak after fire? During fire what happens that uh, up to 250 degrees Celsius there is not much effect but after 300 degrees Celsius a uh, significant strength deterioration takes place. Now how does this particular thing happens? At temperatures above 400 degrees calcium hydroxide which is present inside the concrete it loses its water and it becomes calcium oxide. Okay. Now this calcium oxide has the capability of again turning into calcium hydroxide which uh, gives strength to the concrete but when it does turn into calcium hydroxide it absorbs water and it expands or it swells in volume. So this there is a volume uh, expansion of the concrete and because of that again uh, it weakens the concrete. More dense the concrete better it has a strength. If it, if it undergoes volume expansion, it means that your concrete is becoming lesser dense and therefore it is becoming more weak. So during this process of calcium hydroxide turning to calcium oxide and then calcium oxide again converting back to calcium hydroxide, it expands which weakens your concrete. Now apart from steel and the cement uh, paste or concrete itself, the RCC will also comprise of aggregates. How aggregates behave under the fire is uh, it depends on the type of aggregates but mostly most of them linearly expand and the thing about concrete is that after a certain expansion under fire it starts contracting. So your steel is expanding your aggregates are expanding but your concrete is contracting after a certain limit and because of this opposing behavior what happens is your concrete again becomes weak. So the aggregates they expand uniformly while the concrete after a certain limit it starts shrinking. This opposing behavior makes the concrete weak after exposed to fire. The fire resisting properties of concrete is least when quartz is the predominant mineral in the aggregate because it expands the most. So if we are using quartz in aggregate, uh, I mean if quartz is the predominant mineral in the aggregate then the concrete will have least fire resistance. The best fire resisting aggregates are igneous rocks because they already have undergone a lot of heat. Then the basalts are there and dolerites are there. Limestone expands steadily until temperature of about 900 degrees Celsius and then begins to contract owing to decomposition with liberation of carbon dioxide. You can see in this graph strength as percentage of initial strength and uh, versus temperature is given. So for gravel aggregates and for limestone aggregates you can see how the strength of those aggregates degrade as uh, it undergoes increase in temperature. Let us study the frost action on concrete. So uh, our concrete is going to have water aggregate and cement into it. The way how water behaves under low temperatures, we all know that it expands, that is the anomalous behavior of water. Because of the expansion, it is going to exert pressure inside the concrete and because of that, what will happen? Ice lenses are formed uh, or cracks uh, and because of those ice lenses, the cracks are formed inside the body of the concrete. So water expands about 9% in volume during freezing. The formation of ice lenses in the body of fresh concrete disrupts the fresh concrete causing nearly permanent damage to concrete. So if the, your concrete is fresh, you should not 
expose it to very low temperatures because even after it is going to set uh, it is going to have a lot of cracks inside it and it is going to have a permanent damage the fresh concrete once subjected to frost action will not recover the structural integrity even if later it is allowed to harden at a temperature higher than the freezing temperatures so care has to be taken that always concreting should be done meant controlling the temperature therefore the fundamental point to note in dealing with cold weather concreting is that the temperature of the fresh concrete should be maintained above 0 degree celsius the hardened concrete also should not be subjected to an extremely low temperature as i already told you that the water is going to exert pressure from within and it can exert pressure about 14 megapascal so even though your concrete might easily sustain that you you might have designed your concrete for 30 megapascal or 40 megapascal but still that something exerting pressure from within is not good here in this graph it is shown that uh, for how long your concrete is being exposed to frost conditions or to low temperatures and what is the age of the concrete so if you can see if the concrete is relatively younger or just 4 hours then the increase in volume is much much higher it's 2.5 percent as the age of the concrete is increasing and if that concrete is subjected to these frost stars then the volume uh, increase in volume is reducing and you can see this is the 36 hours aged concrete and it is not having much increase in volume so as the age of concrete goes on increasing the the effect goes on decreasing theories in freezing and thawing one of the theories directly attribute that uh, the voids which are there inside the concrete they are insufficient to cater to the expansion of the solids or expansion of the water and uh, because those voids are incapable to accommodate those exp that expansion it will directly exert pressure on concrete second theory suggests that uh, since there is a pressure exertion from inside within the concrete that is going to have some stress built up already inside the concrete which is going to create cracks now these graphs just look at them something called as number of cycles of freezing and thawing is given now in cold region what happens is after the ambient temperature goes very low and the concrete is subjected to freezing conditions there will be time when the temperature again rises up and all the ice that was or all the snow that is accumulated around the concrete that is going to melt so that is called as thawing so that is considered to be one cycle of freezing and thawing and here in this first graph what it is showing is that if the concrete is very young then the increase in volume percentage is most even at a low number of so freezing and thawing cycles so just at four numbers of freezing and thawing cycles this young concrete is experiencing a very high increase in volume whereas as the age of the concrete increases or as the concrete matures then it can uh, take more number of freezing and thawing cycles so for example this 36 hours of concrete it can take 20 number of freezing and thawing cycles and with just 0.5 percent of increase in volume the second graph is very interesting it shows two different types of concrete first is air entrained concrete second is non air entrained concrete air as we know air has a very good insulation properties even in our jackets that we wear during the winter season it has a lot of air trapped inside it so air can keep the uh, temp temperature locked or it can uh, it, it is a good insulator that is what we say so when the concrete has air entrained into it such such a concrete is going to have a very good thermal insulation capacity and what this graph shows is number of cycles to 25 percent loss in weight so on y axis what you have is number of cycles of freezing and thawing upon 25% loss of weight and higher this number that means more number of cycles that concrete can take 
for 25 percent loss of weight so you can see for air and train concrete it has the highest one 4000 so this number of cycles upon 25 percent loss of weight is higher for air and train concrete and for non air and train concrete you can clearly see there is a lot of gap in the y ordinates so there are a number of ways how we can assess how much damage uh, the frost has done to our concrete the first way is to uh, understand how much loss of weight has occurred into our sample uh, for certain number of cycles of freezing and thawing okay this is one of the way uh, in which we fix the number of cycles for uh, which the concrete has uh, undergone freezing and thawing and then we check how much weight reduction has happened due to that those those many number of cycles the second way is to measure the ultrasonic pulse velocity due to which the from which we can measure the dynamic modulus of elasticity and then we can compare that what is the change in that dynamic modulus of elasticity of a relatively healthy concrete and the one which has undergone frost action blanks defined the durability factor this is the one from which we can ascertain how much the frost action has damaged our concrete number of cycles of freezing and thawing to produce failure divided by 100 so how many number of cycles of freezing and thawing are required to produce failure of our concrete those number of cycles divided by 100 will give you the durability factor this was defined by blanks but generally the one that is used is uh, the one defined by ASTM and uh, its method of calculating the durability is to continue freezing and thawing for 300 cycles or until the dynamic modulus of elasticity is reduced to 60 percent so whichever first occurs that would be considered as the durability factor of the concrete so this is how the frost action is assessed this was it for today's lecture in the next lecture we will be learning some more durability aspect of concrete till then take care thank you